good throw, David. OK, Amanda, we're going to start with yourself. You're thinking of a celebrity, is that correct? Yes. Thinking of a celebrity, just stand up for me. What I need you to do is send your thoughts straight directly into my mind. I need you just with your finger, look me directly in the eye and just touch me just on the forehead there. You felt that, right? Yes. Thank you so much. Oh now, goodness. what you've just done is Did you've you just directly that? sent your thoughts into my mind. And I'm now going to very creatively find out who you are thinking of. Now, believe it or not, before I became a magician, I spent six years in an origami intensive training center in the heart of Japan, just so I could be <laughs> here with you guys doing this right now. Now, am I right in saying this is someone who's very particular about their hair? Yes. And I think it's probably a man. Don't give anything away, but I'm going to just... That's perfect. OK, Amanda, please tell us, this wonderful audience, who are you thinking of? David Beckham. David Beckham. If I open this up, I've made something very, very special for you to keep. We have... Mr. still thinking of a drink, is that correct? Correct. Would you mind now revealing to us the drink that you have been thinking of? It's the drink I'm drinking right now. Which is? A cup of tea. A cup of tea! A cup of, a cup of tea. tea. Now, this has been here the whole time. It's been in front of yourself, Simon. Yeah. Inside here, ladies and gentlemen, just as you asked for... Orange soda! a little bit awkward, but we can still fix this. Uh, don't panic. Could you just reach out your hand just here for me? Just send me that positive energy. Oh! What is going on? Wow. I didn't like it. It's so rude. Oh, my goodness. Believe it or not, you've now just filled me with all of your kinetic energy, which allows me to act almost like a microwave so the can starts to heat up. Oh, come on. And it gets hotter and hotter. Please feel it. What? Feel the can. It's getting hotter and hotter. Yeah, just make sure that is a sealed can. I was do think of one drink you said, breakfast tea, was that right? Correct. If I open this up, ladies and gentlemen, just what you ordered. No way. Tea. Tea in a can. Please taste it. A cup of tea. Please taste it, make sure it really is tea. A delicious cup of <laughs> tea. Yes, tea. Thank you very much. Thank you. How the hell did you do that? I have no idea. Thank you so much. Good evening. Tonight, I have a gift once again, which I'm going to leave in front of you, Simon, for now. I need you to just keep an eye on it and make sure no one touches it just for now. I also have the wonderful Amanda Holden's autobiography. <laughs> and a photograph of our judges. Alicia, I need you to do me a favor. In just a moment, I'm gonna riffle through the pages. I just need you just to say stop wherever you like for me. OK. Stop. Are you happy there? It's up to you. Yep. We can go forward no, and make... that's fine. You happy? What I need you to do is just remember for me just the page number that you've stopped on and okay. also just the first word on the page for me. OK. Have you got that? Please yes. remember it and we're going to come back to that in just a moment. Now, Amanda, I actually kept the receipt for your book. Good. Don't panic. <laughs> I was never planning on taking it back. It was nice to <laughs> I just wanted to show you that magic is all around us all the time. We just have to choose to find it. If I was to go back in time, for example, and get my cash back, it would look something like this. <laughs> Alicia, please tell us, what was the page number that you just chose a moment ago? 176. 176. Yes. Inside this gift, which has been here the entire time, is in fact a message in a bottle. If you look closely, you'll see that actually it is a page. If I open it up so you can all see, it is in fact a 
a page from your book, Commander. Alicia, please tell us what page have I got here? 176. 176, the same page. Please turn to page 176 as quick as you can for me, Alicia. As quick as you can, and you will find that page 176 no longer exists in the book. Now that because this isn't just a matching page, but this is in fact no. the exact oh page. My goodness. Now Alicia, you also chose a word. Yes. For the first time, please tell us which word did you choose? One of my favourites, bottom. Bottom. Of course that would be my Great favorite. choice, great choice. <laughs> Ladies and gents, it's been an absolute pleasure. And a real dream come true to perform live in front of the nation tonight. Just to finish, burnt into the page, the chosen word. Oh, that's sick. Bottom. Oh, no. Thank you. Tonight, I'm going to be performing classic magic. The magicians have been performing for many years, but I'm going to put my spin on it and use it to tell a story about a very special person and one of the people who inspires me the most in magic. He was born in 1918, and he went on to become one of the youngest members of the Magic Circle at the time in 1936. When, war, when World War II broke out, he enlisted into the Royal Artillery and he was sent to the front line in Singapore where he fought bravely for king and country. While he was there, he underwent heavy fighting. He lost many of his friends and he himself was shot numerous times and severely wounded. His family thought he was dead but in fact, he was captured and he spent the next three years of his life in a prisoner of war camp. Amanda, would you sign this card as quick as you can for me? While he was in the camps, he underwent brutal treatment on a daily basis, treatment that no person should ever have to go through. But one thing that did keep him going was his ability to perform magic. Because he would perform not only for his comrades, to keep morale high, but he would also perform for the guards, who would give him and his friends extra food during the long periods of starvation. But he would have, his favorite trick was to have a sign, a name, to rip it into pieces, to burn it, completely destroying it, pass, fix. And in a second of impossibility, restore hope among his comrades. This is the story that makes me proud to be British. This is the story of Mr. Fergus Ancorn. I'm very proud and honoured to present to you tonight the man himself at 97 years of age.